Good evening. <clears throat> I have a, a word, a lesson, a story, and a prayer that I want to share with you guys tonight. This is your first time seeing me. I'm Emily Rose Lewis. I am a prophetic teacher, author, <laughs> speaker. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, go ahead and follow me, subscribe and, to get more um, teaching, prayers, and prophetic words. And so I'm going to start off this um, word, this lesson, this prayer, <laughs> this story with a prayer to the Lord to, to just enable me to do this in His power and His strength so that I'll be leaning on Him, speaking only His words. Uh, good evening, you guys. Let me know where you're watching from. Share this. Invite some people. It's not going to be very long. I'm sitting outside the post office. <laughs> um, but this is really... Um, there's a lot of spiritual force behind this tonight. Because this is something that is going on with me. So I am digging deep in the Lord. And I'm going to bring you guys in with me. And I think many of you might actually uh, be in a place where you really need this. It is like just right there. <laughs> Cheryl, I hope you're coming to the Texas conference. Houston, Texas, August 24th. You can get the tickets at Eventbrite. Oh, Lord. I believe this is important. I believe this is powerful. And... Um, I believe this is being led by the Holy Spirit is very, I mean, he led me out. He said, go to the post office. And so I asked my husband, watch the baby. I got to go to the post office. I don't need to know. I need to go out just to check my mailbox. And as I'm putting on my shoes, he said, you're doing um, this video that I want you to do. Hey, in Florida. Oh, Lord. I thank you that you show up for us. I thank you, God, that you love to communicate with us. I thank you, God, that you are a God of light, and you are a God of instruction, and you are a God of direction, and you guide us on the path that we should go, and your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path, and you make our way straight, and you strengthen our ankles, and you lead us along the narrow path. And you lead us beside still waters and, and, and you beckon us to follow you, Lord. There is noise in the earth. There is sometimes uh, static in our mind. There, there are other spirits trying to speak and deceive us, Lord. And so we come together tonight to hear from you. We, we turn aside from whatever distracts, Lord. Enable us to focus in on you, to focus in on what you want to speak to us, and make our requests be made known to you, Lord. I pray that you would show up tonight in this broadcast. Speak through me only what you would have me speak, Lord. Not any less, not any more. And may it be powerful and effective and not return to you void, but that your word would go forth and accomplish what it is that you intend for it to accomplish tonight. Okay, so <clears throat> did I get out of the screen here? <laughs> okay, so that I'm going to start with a story. And the Glory Tribe knows this because they've seen it unfold. My son, little backstory, is 22 years old, lives in Hong Kong. He dances with the Hong Kong Ballet, and he had a spring break from work for like 13 days. So he bought a ticket. He said, Mom, there's some people that are going together to leave out of the country, but I just don't feel like, I feel like that would be dangerous for me to go with them. He, he's trying to live by the Spirit of God and felt like they, I don't know if they were going to party or what have you. He just felt like he was supposed to not go with them. But he didn't want to stay in Hong Kong on his spring break. So he bought a ticket to Thailand. So I'm going to go to Thailand. It's great. You know, have a good time. He's very adventurous. And so he buys his ticket to Thailand. The last I heard was a Facebook, on a Facebook post. <clears throat> he says, I landed in Thailand. And then he fell off the grid. <laughs> And he calls me, we talk, 
especially when he is traveling. He calls me and tells me what's going on. And so I honestly was a little bit concerned because not only had he not called me, which we talked through Facebook Live, but he hadn't logged on to any of his social networks. You can see on Messenger, somebody so-and-so logged on yesterday, six hours ago, and he hadn't logged on. Days and days went by, and I'm like, yeah, I, I didn't, because the Lord's good about putting a check in my spirit for deep intercession. I wasn't getting that. But when Easter came, and Easter went, and he had been gone like nine days, and he hadn't logged on, and my son does dance modeling, and so a lot of times he'll um, get in touch with like famous photographers in the countries that he's traveling with and, and, and do a photo shoot. So I'm like, Sunday when he didn't call me at Easter, I'm like, there's, this is kind of freaking me out because he would at least call me by the end of Easter, you know, if something was not wrong. And so I felt like a little panic hit me on the way home from dinner. And I said, and, and, and I'm not giving myself kudos, but I, this is just where I am spiritually. And this is, this is a mature faith that I've come into through much tribulation and much trial and error and trial <laughs> and error. So I say, you know, what are the options? What could be going on? He, he could have gotten kidnapped. He also was saying he's rented a car. He didn't have a driver's license ever. So, I mean... He's gotten some practice driving my car here and there, but he's never gotten a driver's license, and he said he was going to rent a car. So, driving on the opposite side of the street, not having much driving experience in a foreign country, also the possibility of meeting up with somebody, because I had read, you know, of models, female models, that had met up with a famous photographer who had made a whole thing and cat kidnapped him and sold him on the black market. So, I mean, this is just within moments of, hold on, he went all Easter and hadn't called me. Something is not right here. And so we're driving home, and I said, he could be dead. He could be dead. <laughs> he could be dead. Okay, so that is a possibility. I know that God is good, and I know that God is sovereign, and I know that my son had a major call on his life. And so if the Lord allowed the enemy to take him out, he took, he only allowed it because he knew something that I didn't know and he was protecting Forrest from something in life that could have taken him down the wrong path. Who knows? So it is a possibility that he, he has died. And Lord, if that has happened, I accept from your hand and trust you. Okay, got that out of the way so Satan couldn't just freak me out. Like, okay, I've accepted that's a possibility. And then... I'm like, but if he hasn't died, <laughs> if he's not injured laying on the side of the road, can you please give me a sign? Because it was another five, four days, it was Sunday, it was going to be another three days before he was back in Hong Kong. And, and, and when he had heard and heard from him from Easter, and when that meant that he could possibly be dead in a foreign country, I knew that it was going to really mess with my day, even accepting the truth. If your son is dead on the other side of the world and you have no way of knowing where his body is, that's still going to ruin your day. You know what I'm saying? Like, if that's a possibility, and I'm like, I, you know, I accept it if that's it, but do I really have to have today, tomorrow, with that possibility still on the table? Could you speak to me, Lord, and give me, a, and I'm saying this out loud, could you give me a sign that he's okay? And I hadn't got that out of my mouth, and I don't know how I did it, but I laid on the horn. I laid on the horn. And I, I like jerked myself, okay? I'm like, oh, I scared myself. I don't even know how I did it. And it was at a light. And Dave, there was a motorcycle beside me. And Dave said, the kid on the motorcycle, because I didn't see it, jumped like, hey, what? I didn't do anything. And I knew that was a sign from the Lord. I knew because I know the voice of God. And when I'm doing the Hidden Messages workshop, I'm going to really train people how to hone in to knowing and seeing and being able to discern when God is speaking. And um, recognizing the parables and recognizing the signs and interpretation of dreams and, and seers visions and stuff. So, But I knew that kid on the motorcycle was Forrest and me freaking out. Laying on the horn is something you do when there is possible danger. There was no danger. The kid jumped and then looked up like, what? I was just on the motorcycle. 
motorcycle here. So I'm like, okay, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. So that was good for me. I felt pretty good, but I'm still, you know, okay. I think he's okay. I think he's okay now. And I get home and I had done, this was Sunday. I had done the kingdom living service about prayer. I had I preached about prayer. That's what the sermon was about. And I was reading the comments on that sermon. And do you know, at the exact moment, I mean, it, 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 it had to have been within five or ten minutes of me speaking that out loud and asking the Lord to confirm that Forrest was okay if he was. I had somebody post, and this is so random, this is so random, a meme of Forrest Gump. It's just a picture of Forrest Gump waving. He's on the boat on the in the ocean. You just see ocean all around him, and he's just waving. And it was clear as day. Forrest waving at me from the other side of the ocean. It was just like, why would she post that on my prayer? Like, just Forrest Gump. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, God, you are good. I know he's okay. I'm not stressing it. I didn't get on my face praying for his protection. None of that. I just went to bed. God is very particular about major things. <clears throat> when I've asked him a question, he's very, very good about confirming something to me three times. <clears throat> it's getting dark here. So me and my husband go to bed and in the middle of the night, there is one of my 17 month, well, she's 18 month old daughter's toys in our room. One toy in the room. There's musical toys all over the house and this toy makes lots of songs. We were woken up to that toy singing a song and it was like groccoli. Not from song to song, that one song over and over. I'm a little traveler carrying my suitcase here and there. <laughs> and then I'm a great adventurer enjoying trips everywhere. This toy in the middle of the night, and one of the things I said, God, speak to me in the night. Speak to me in the night. I was talking about a dream, but that was my third confirmation. And it was just like Dave had to get up and turn the toy off because it wouldn't stop. It just kept singing that over and over. So I was like, okay, cool. You know, like I had asked the tribe to pray for Forrest, you know, prior to that. And like I told them the signs and then I didn't, you know, I went, I enjoyed my day Monday. I enjoyed my day Monday. And then this morning I heard from my son and he said, my phone broke on the second day. <laughs> he said it was the craziest thing. I guess it was like New Year's in Thailand when he got there. And he said, I just went out of my hotel and I was walking down the street. Somebody threw a bucket of water on me. And like, I look and people are running all over the place with massive water guns. Everybody. He's like, like guys in suits standing in the, the, the doorman at fancy hotels had on, had these big, massive water guns. People driving in the bus, shooting people out of the bus with these water guns. And like somebody just threw a bucket of water on him. Like the first day he was there, or the second day he was there, and ruined his phone. Needless to say, <clears throat> I could have, and there would have been a time when I would have been so flipped out, freaked out, fearful, shaken, on my face, praying, interceding, fear, you know, just feeling like I was keeping Forrest alive. <clears throat> and I'm going to talk about some of this in, in our prayer sessions. Why it's so important to understand and be able to decipher your fears and a real prayer burden. Because looking back over my life and my growth in prayer, how many seasons I wasted, honestly, in just burden, praying, crying, what I thought was intercessory prayer, but it was nothing more than fear that God wasn't even calling me to that. <laughs> and so... When you kind of get in this place where you can discern, but sometimes we don't always know and we need those confirmations. <clears throat> so that's where I'm going to get into this word. How to, when to ask God for signs and for confirmation, how to know to, to, that he's giving them to you. First off, the, the reason why God was so generous in those three signs and so clear is because of how I handled the fear when it hit me. When you first have that question, when you're first really trying to seek the Lord, the number one thing 
it can't be you're confused because you don't want to accept the will of God, whatever it might be, or you're confused because you didn't like what you heard. <laughs> you know, there has to be a surrender. And this is all the Christian life. You're not going to get the benefits of walking with the Lord if you are not surrendered. And so even in the little things, you come to this place of surrender. Because you could be walking surrendered, then you get hit with something and you have to surrender that thing and surrender that person and surrender that situation. And so in that moment, when the possibility hit, I considered God is good, but God is sovereign and there is a possibility that my son could be dead. There is a possibility that this guy that I want to marry isn't the one for me. There's a possibility, you know what I'm saying? There are things that we might not want to ever consider and receive from the hand of God, but when we come to that place of surrender and we're trying to seek the Lord's will about something, in order to hear from God, in order to discern the signs without... Getting into deception, because you can hear, you can search out words, and you can see the signs that tell you what you want to hear. But those kind of signs, it's God, it's God, it's God. It's not like, I know it's the, it, you know, I mean, I've heard things like, I know that's the guy I'm supposed to marry because his favorite color is blue, and I'm seeing blue everywhere. That is not a sign from God. <laughs> that is not a sign from God. <laughs> oh, Lord, help us. <clears throat> Lord, help us to understand that place of surrender where it's like, no matter what, Lord, you know, at that place, I offered God to give me that intercessory burden if I needed it, the confirmation that he was okay if I needed it, you know, whatever, however he wanted to do it. And that's when he spoke. <clears throat> and there's some people that are being faced with a decision or, and, and I, I'm in that place right now where I am really am emptying myself of my opinions of what is it going to make this might be easier for me this might be the preference for me but I need to hear from you I need to hear from you God because I know that you know some things I don't know and I, I you don't have to tell me all the details Lord of why it is this way or that way, or I need to make this decision or that decision. I just need to hear from you. I need you to confirm to me the direction I need to take. I need you to confirm to me whatever this thing is, one way or the other. One way or the other. I'm not, I'm, I have no opinion because you are good and whatever it is that's true, speak the truth to me, Lord. Speak the truth. Confirm to me your truth. Confirm to me your will. Com comfort me if there needs to be comfort with the truth. Comfort me with the truth, whether it's what I want to hear or not. I need the grace to handle it, whether it ends up being good news like I had or not so good news, which I've had that before, too. And that's why I was able to say, hey, it's possible. When you've had some serious tragedies, you know, that in this life, <laughs> that you can have tragedy hit that you would never think in a million years I'd have to go through this. I never, never would have thought my dad would have shot and killed somebody and then shot himself in the head. That like was, didn't happen to people like me and my dad wasn't the profile for that. I never committed a crime in his life. But yet he shot and killed somebody, stuck the gun in his mouth, shot himself in the head. When you go through those kind of things, you go through those kind of things and you see the Lord work, you see the Lord move, you see the miracles, you see the growth, you see the deliverance, you see the power, you see the growth and love, the grace, the way that he's moved, the way that he's worked. Then you can come to that place where you can say, I surrender. I surrender that this thing and I need to hear from you about it. I need to hear from you about it. Lord, please get us out of the place where we need to hear. You know, God, people will send prayer requests. Pray for me that I get this job. Now, unless the Lord, I'll pray for you that God will let you know if that's the job he has for you and that you can stand in faith and believe for it and receive what he has for you. But, you know, we have to be careful. Not pray for me that this is the guy for me. Pray for me, you know. <laughs> of, co uh, of course, if God had burdened me to pray for my son in a, in a deep, over, 
I would have stayed up all night praying. I've done that too. I've done that too. I've stayed up all night praying and interceding and blocking the enemy from doing something. You know, not saying <laughs> that I wouldn't do that as well and that that is not an option that was on the table that God could have spoken to me, but he didn't. So I hope this helps some of you guys because I believe the Lord wants me to encourage you to pray for signs. Pray for clear signs. Pray for clear confirmation of the steps that he wants you to take if it is a decision. Or pray for clear confirmation about whatever it is, whatever it is that you need to hear from God about. And you need to hear from the Lord about it. And, and, and so I just pray that you kind of receive this word, get to that place of surrender, and then pay attention pay attention and it'll just come up. You don't have to, you, you got to be careful seeking a sign like out here where you're looking at this number and that number. And uh, I mean, like, listen to the story that I told. I think it's pertinent. I think the Lord wanted me to share that story because signs from the Lord will come in such a way that it is so, it, it can't be misinterpreted. Forrest is waving. <laughs> It'll be clear as day. He might send an angel to speak to you in the dream. He might, You might hear the voice of God in your dream tonight. And he will come and speak to you that way. Jesus will come to you and speak to you in your dream. You might get a phone call or somebody will send a scripture or you will turn on a TV show. And I mean, word for word, you know that God is speaking. And it's not just by a vague color that you could associate with what you want kind of thing. I'm talking real signs from the Lord, miraculous, powerful, strong, you know it's God. Love you guys. <clears throat> I pray the Lord anoint your ears, your eyes, your heart to hear, to see, to perceive exactly what he wants to speak to you over the situation that's going to free you up. And some of you guys just need to hear a word from the Lord about your future very specifically, even if it's a far off thing, so that you can hold on in faith a little bit longer because things aren't seeming to look a certain type of way. You need to hear from God about a person, about a marriage, about a child. You need to hear, my child's okay. You need to hear, my child's going to make it. You know, you need to hear, my marriage is going to turn out to glorify God. You might need something like that from him, and God can give that to you. And, and God can give, the thing is, if it's something that you truly need in your walk of faith, not because you're spiritually lazy and you're not praying and you're not reading the Bible, you know, and you just need God to cushion your whole life with just speaking these supernatural things. If you are a true walking with the Lord believer and you need a specific word, specific sign from him, the Lord promises he will meet your need. And so I'm praying and prophesying and believing and agreeing that you're going to get that. You know, even this week, even in the next 24 to 48 hours, and I'm believing it for myself as well. So God bless you. Share this. Invite people. It's getting dark. <laughs> I love you guys, and I will, I'll be talking with you soon.